The History Channel has followed two brothers, Marty and Rick Legina, as they attempt to uncover the truth of Cursed Oak Island. Oak Island is just off the coast of Nova Scotia and is a mysterious place steeped in secrets and myths that have ties to the Knights Templar, kings, and pirates. There are also rumors that over 200 years ago, a pirate by the name of Captain Kidd left a hidden treasure there. The need to unravel the secrets of this cursed island began when the Leginas were just boys, and now they and the rest of their crew have been on an 11-season journey to find the elusive treasure. However, as they search high and low for these treasures, one has to wonder how much treasure they are already in possession of, and how they have been able to afford this elaborate hunt for so long. American brothers and treasure hunters Rick and Marty Legina started their Fellowship of the Dig in 2006, when they started their search for the Oak Island treasure. It is speculated that they took out loans and invited investors into their venture when they first got the funds to search Oak Island for its lost treasure. They were raised together in northern Michigan and learned about the hidden treasure when they were just little boys. They read about it in a 1965 issue of Reader's Digest and have clung to the dream ever since. Both brothers are very close. Even with the completely different paths life took them on during their adult lives, having pursued completely different careers. Marty Legina Marty Legina is the younger brother of Rick and a much more practical man. He is more skeptical about finding anything on the island, but he is also willing enough to dream and try anyway. He studied to become an engineer and founded his own energy company, Terra Energy, which he sold for $60 million. Marty Legina has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Michigan Technological University and a Juris Doctor from the University of Michigan. He has a law degree and is a member of the state bar. He has an enduring love of science and met one of his best friends and now co-star of the show, Craig Tester, in college. Marty is also the founder and CEO of Heritage Sustainable Energy, and his best friend Craig is the vice president of the company. According to Salary.com, the typical yearly salary of a CEO of a company that size is around $600,000. To add an extra revenue stream, he is also the founder of Mari Vineyard, based in Michigan, where he also has a website from which anyone can order extremely affordable wine. Alongside his wine club, the events held there and the wine tasting tours, he sells apparel, drinks, and accessories. His other investments are unknown, aside from the ones made public, like funding other treasure hunters. An unconfirmed report claims that the brothers get paid around $100,000 an episode, and perhaps even more in reruns, as they are executive producers on the show. This means that with 25 episodes in a season, they are making $2.5 million per season. With this alone, we can calculate that with 166 episodes of the show, they would have made over $16 million since they started filming the show in 2014. To add to this revenue stream, they are also available for speaking events where their fee is a minimum of $5,000 for a speaking engagement. They also have multiple books out with excellent reviews, as well as merchandise like hats, shirts, and keychains on the History Channel website. To add to this, the island has a tour company, Salty Dog Sea Tours, which is booked all the way through the end of April of this year, a very successful tour around the waters of Oak Island, an additional revenue stream for the crew of Oak Island. This means Marty could possibly have a net worth close to 90 to $100 million. Craig Tester The next prominent person on the show is longtime friend and business partner Craig Tester, who built Terra Energy with Marty Legina. He is an expert when it comes to earth scans and drilling. Craig has been an incredible help when it comes to searching for clues around the island, able to recognize the significance behind every dig operation. It is likely he made money from the sale of the energy company, Terra Energy, that he helped build alongside Marty Legina. In the show Beyond Oak Island, we find out that Marty, Craig, and Rick invest in other treasure hunters' explorations with the hope that they find something of great worth and are able to make a profit on the investment. The sale of found artifacts and treasure can be life-changing, as they are able to get huge sums of money in the hundreds of millions, depending on what they find. Not many treasures or returns on investments have been made public knowledge, but they do allude to investing large amounts of money. Craig is also the vice president and manager of a turbine company, Heritage Sustainable Energy. The salary of a founder and vice president of a company this size would be, on average, a quarter of a million dollars a year. In addition to this, Craig is also the manager of the Rock Management Group, and he has a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Michigan Technological University. His net worth is likely closer to Marty Legina's of around 80 to $90 million, as he was his partner in many business ventures like Terra Energy, Vineyards, and even Oak Island Tours. He has also appeared in 100 episodes of The Curse of Oak Island, as well as one episode of Beyond Oak Island. 
The men have been known to invest their own money into scouring the island for treasures and clues, but it is unknown how much of their millions have gone into this. Alex Legina Another member of the crew is Alex Legina, son of Marty Legina and nephew of Rick Legina. He has a degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Michigan. He is involved in his father's businesses, like the winery and energy company. There is also mention of his investments in real estate in Michigan. Alex Lagina is a very popular figure in the show because of his skill and intelligence when coming up with new strategies to find new treasures. He has been in 95 episodes of Curse of Oak Island, 10 episodes of The Curse of Civil War Gold, and one episode of Beyond Oak Island. If we calculated that each episode paid him $100,000, he would have earned nearly $11 million. It is likely that he has also earned money from investments like those of his father, and other sites speculate that his net worth is as high as $50 million. Jack Begley Following the theme of being friends and family, the next cast member of the Oak Island crew is Jack Begley, the stepson of Craig Tester. He is based in Michigan, as most of the Oak Island crew seems to be, and he never hesitates to do the dirty work on the show. Jack and Craig are often working together on any digs on the island. When he isn't working with his stepdad, he can be found with friend and fellow crew member Gary Drayton, a metal detectorist around the island. Jack Begley is a producer on the show and has been in 100 episodes of The Curse of Oak Island. Calculating this would give Jack a net worth of $10 million, without including his revenue as a producer from the syndication of the show. Of course, as he is only a supporting character, he is unlikely to make the same amount as the Legina brothers so his net worth could be as much as half of that estimate. However, the show is not his only stream of revenue, as Jack owns his own company, Remote Energy Solutions, as well as being a drone pilot. A drone pilot is estimated to make over $100,000 a year. In addition to his co-ownership of a company that is estimated to make seven figures a year, his total net worth is estimated to be around three to $10 million as of 2024. Gary Drayton Gary Drayton is originally from England and taught himself the art of metal detecting. He has often helped the Fellowship of the Dig unearth many of Oak Island's incredible treasures. Gary offers invaluable insight to the show and is featured in Beyond Oak Island as well, given his connection to the greater world of treasure hunters. He has many of his own catchphrases on the show and is behind finding coins, semi-precious gems, and most significantly a lead cross with ties to the Knights Templar. He has appeared in 150 episodes of the show, meaning he could be worth $15 million from show appearances alone. However, given his position as a side character, it is unlikely to be that high. However, he has written two books and found treasures himself, including rare coins, a ring made of emeralds and Inca gold, and even a Roman perfume bottle. Many sites estimate his net worth to be around one to three million dollars. Charles Barkhouse, another crew member who has been in as many as 93 episodes and is a fan favorite, is the Oak Island historian, Charles Barkhouse. He has lived and investigated the island for over 50 years, and he gives guided tours around the island as well as the Oak Island Museum. According to Alex Legina, he knows a lot about Oak Island and is one of the foremost historians of its legacy. Charles first started working as an advisor to the Legina brothers and is a production assistant for the show. A production manager can make anywhere between $66,000 and $115,000 a year, according to Salary.com. To add to his revenue, he is a published author. Aside from being known as a historian, the most interesting fact about him is that he is a Freemason and actually a Knight Templar himself. Some fans speculate that he is there to keep an eye on the island and lead the team away from finding the treasure. Of course, these theories are not believed by serious fans, and he is very well respected for his expertise, which he shares with visitors on the island as well as in segments of the show. Some even say, Charles is the true treasure on Oak Island, whose salary as an Oak Island guide is estimated to be around $33,000 a year. His deep roots on the island are appreciated and lend authenticity to their work on Oak Island. All of his show appearances, his book deal, production credits, and tour guide salary would put him in the range of around two to three million dollars. This is taking into account that he would not be paid the same amount as the main characters in the show and because he does not appear in as many episodes. Laird Niven One of the most important members of the crew is Laird Niven. He is an archaeologist and historic preservation expert who has been in over 117 episodes of the show. His skills are welcome, as they rely on him to protect and explain some of the treasures and clues they find on the island. An archaeologist can make a salary of $46,000 to $100,000 a year, adding in the historic preservationist expertise, which, as a career, can make over $50,000 a year, can be counted on to make his expertise all the more valuable. 
So in truth, his salary as an archaeologist can be more than double the average, to over $120,000. Laird Naiven describes himself as a self-employed archaeologist, and he studied sociology and social anthropology at Dalhousie University. But more than this important cornerstone of his identity, he is also a businessman. He is also the owner of In-Situ Cultural Heritage Research Group, a company that provides archaeological, research, and historic preservation services that has been running for over 25 years. His company is internationally recognized and his research group is said to be worth $22 million. His dedication to historical preservation efforts is well respected and acknowledged in the historical preservationist community. Like many of the crew on Oak Island, he gives a lot of interviews, seminars, and guest speaking engagements for different events and occasions. He is even slated to speak at the Chester Municipal Heritage Society's annual meeting in May of this year. Given the prestige, respect, and expertise of Laird Naiven, alongside his many episodes on Oak Island, his net worth is estimated to be around four to five million dollars at the lowest. Some estimates would place him at $16 million. Rick Legina. Rick is the older brother to Marty, and he used to be a United States postal worker. While living in Michigan, he learned to see the world in a very old-fashioned way. He lived by an old code of conduct where honor and determination meant everything. This is how he has been able to keep believing in his dream of finding the Oak Island treasure. A postal worker would make around $62,000, $122,000 a year. While this is a good living, it is unlikely to be able to fund a treasure hunt of the size needed to search Oak Island. His net worth has skyrocketed since joining the show, as he has been in over 160 episodes. Rick is estimated to have a net worth of around $20 million, Glass from the 18th century was recently discovered deep within a cave. Both professionals, scientists, and other researchers are interested in this unexpected discovery. With the arrival of Craig Tester, who works with Rick and Marty Legina, as well as fellow landowner Tom Nolan and other members of the team, the study into the enigma known as the Great Quadrilateral is resumed. Approximately 32 feet long and composed of stones, the object in issue may have been created hundreds of years ago, according to Fred. He drew a diagram in the 1990s, and the crew is now excavating the northeastern part of the quadrilateral. They are trying to find out who created it and why in the hopes of discovering these things. Treasure hunter Gary Drayton will examine the finds for important hints and indicators of the location of the treasure as metal detectorist Billy Gerhardt excavates the feature. This finding might offer the team yet another nugget of knowledge on the period of time during which this feature was created. They dug deeper and tried to raise something, but it was a big curved piece of iron, and it was incredibly difficult. An 18th century glass was discovered in a rectangle that was dug up deep during the excavation. Due to the way it was coiled, its size, and its weight, they claimed that when the piece of iron arrived there, it reminded them of a chunk of a cannonball. This was brought on by both the size and weight of the particle. One of the crew members disclosed that he had been successful in finding a sizable number of them in the southeast region of the country. It may or may not be true in Rick Legina's opinion that this finding could offer a significant hint as to who created the so-called Great Quadrilateral, but it's likely that Rick Legina is right to make his assessment. In that situation, it becomes much more intriguing to think about the topic of what exactly its aim was. This would be a great site to find any wealth that may have been taken to Oak Island and buried there in the past. They all reached the same conclusion after something was pulled up, and then something else was reburied in the same spot. This is definitely unique. They hope to find additional artifacts and come to their own conclusions about what they may mean since they thought there might be other boulders, and they also thought there might be. The team is currently working on the southern half of the feature, after just finishing the northern portion, where they found several items that may be of great interest. The mystery further intensified and grew more perplexing as they descended beneath the stone layer. The metal detecting expert Gary Drayton and the Oak Island historian Charles Barkhouse continue to snoop around on Samuel Ball's property in the eighth episode of the fourth season, The Mystery of Samuel Ball, and turn up a number of intriguing artifacts. This ongoing inquiry is known as the mystery of Samuel Ball. Drayton and Barkhouse find a dandy button, a sort of button that was often worn on garments in the 1700s near the start of the tale. They rapidly uncover several coins from the 1700s with King George II's image, as well as a lead ingot used to make musket balls. 
Drayton had the idea that all of these artifacts might be the remains of a military encampment after discovering what looks to be a metal tag from the bottom of a revolver with a name etched on it, which some online academics think may have been Samuel Ball's own name. Drayton's discovery of another object leads to the development of this theory. These campers from the 18th century either left their own treasure behind or were searching for hidden wealth. The only thing concerning Oak Island in the 1700s about which there is complete certainty is that there was a great deal of activity going on there. In the fourth episode of Season 7's The Lucky 13, Gary Drayton and Charles Barkhouse revisit Lot 21 to see if they can uncover any new information. In reality, they are successful in finding a pair. The first thing they find is an 1800s British halfpenny coin. The next thing they find is a brooch with a detailed design of a rope and a leaf on it. Marty Legina will take some time to count the number of branches on the leaf after he has finished polishing the brooch. There are a total of 13 of them. This is a reference to the crew finding the Appeal to Heaven flag in the Lost and Founding episode from the previous season of Lost and Founding. The flag was flown from George Washington's own ships. The picture showed a pine tree with 13 different branches. A carving of a tree with 13 branches has been carved into a rock on Oak Island's northern side. Additionally, the number 13 is believed to have some form of significance, and the Knights Templar, an organization that is already closely associated with many of the artifacts found on Oak Island, are said to be connected in some way. Gary Drayton and his metal detecting team once more find evidence of activity on the island in the 17th century in Dead Man's Chest the second episode of the fifth season of The Curse of Oak Island. This time, the activity may have been from the military, potentially from pirates or even from both. The crew finds a 17th century musket ball that was used in weapons before discovering what they think is a Maravedi, which is similar to the object found in The Find, the season one finale. The difference is that this currency has been divided up into smaller, easier to handle pieces. Coins like the Maravedi were often cut in the 17th century to create change. This practice gave origin to the phrase Pieces of Eight, which was later made well-known by the classic pirate novel Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Another puzzle piece that supports the idea that pirates visited the Oak Island coasts. Is it feasible that additional research on piracy has to be done? The Legina brothers and Gary Drayton continue their search for hidden money in the Curse of Oak Island. Season 5, Episode 3, Obstruction, by looking into the Dunfield spoils. Robert Dunfield dug a hole that was 100 feet wide and 140 feet deep in 1965 in an attempt to find the rumored treasure that was supposed to be hidden on Oak Island. Ultimately, the large hole was filled in on its own, and the search for the treasures proved to be futile. The soil that was taken out during excavation, however, was not put to another use and ended up being called the Dunfield Spoils. With the use of a metal detector, the Oak Island crew swiftly located a pair of English coins bearing the likeness of King Charles II on one side and the dates 1673 and 1694 on the other. These two coins' discovery on Oak Island in the 1700s suggests that either English military soldiers or pirates frequented the area. For more recent stuff, don't forget to subscribe and enable post notifications. In an effort to unravel hints about Oak Island's past and refute myths, they visit various parts of the island and speak with locals. The team also discovers gold close to the money pit, indicating that there might be further treasures there that have yet to be discovered. Even though they've encountered some difficulties, the crew continues to move and conduct their inquiry. Season 9 disproved Fred Nolan's claims of an ancient Portuguese presence while supporting Zena Halpern's Templar map. This discovery has restored their trust in their mission. Additionally, the group learns the top 10 Portuguese connections. The Legina brothers are looking into the disappearance of the riches from Oak Island. The Portuguese Order of Christ, the Knights Baronet, and Prince Henry Sinclair are all seen to be potential contenders for hiding the treasure from Oak Island. The team encountered numerous rumors and plots along the road, which frequently cast a shadow over the wealth itself. Nevertheless, it appears that this season might be the one in which they ultimately succeed. Even though the current season is coming to a close, The Curse of Oak Island. Drilling Down is scheduled to air the next week. In Traverse City, Michigan, 
Maddie intends to meet with Rick, Marty, Craig, Alex, and Jack, according to the summary. They will review the amazing results of Season 10 and get a sneak preview of what is ahead in 2011. The origins of this mysterious energy are still a topic of discussion among NASA experts. Click the next video to find out more about this enigmatic power.